In this problem, we're asking you to determine the ratio of the drag on a cylinder to a drag on a fairing that contains that cylinder. Um, we're asking you this to do this for probably a few different reasons, really. So one is that um, just to get some practice using drag coefficients and uh, calculating drag from the drag coefficients. Another is to get a general sense of the magnitudes of drag coefficients for different shapes. A streamlined shape like the fairing, which is an airfoil, compared to a drag coefficient for a cylinder, which is not streamlined. Um, and then the third part of it is to get a sense of how uh, large the differences can be um, in terms of the drag uh, when you compare a streamlined shape uh, to a uh, shape that's not streamlined. So um, let's actually work through this problem. Um, to begin with, let's write out the drag in the cylinder and use the drag coefficient um, to help us uh, determine what that drag on the cylinder would be. So remember that the coefficient of drag um, is equal to the drag divided by um, one-half rho v squared times the reference area. So here I'm just flipping that around and saying, all right, the drag on the cylinder therefore would be one-half rho v squared. So these is, this is the density in the free stream, and that's the velocity of the free stream squared. And then this is the reference area, um, which for the cylinder are, we've labeled S um, cylinder, or S sil. Um, and then multiply by the drag coefficient for the cylinder. So we can do the same exact thing for the fairing, and um, uh, that gives us the drag for the fairing is one half rho infinity v infinity squared reference area of the fairing times the drag coefficient for the fairing. Okay, and now we can just take the ratio of these two, which is what we've been asked to find. And of course, when we take the ratio of these two, um, the common terms are going to uh, be eliminated. So the one half rho infinity v infinity squared terms cancel. They so it doesn't actually this ratio does not depend on uh, the density and velocity. Um, it's going to uh, work out of this problem. Um, so the drag ratio then is S cylinder CD cylinder over S fairing CD fairing. All right, now um, let's go a little further then. So the next step is to start substituting in, in this case, for the reference area. Um, I'm going to do the reference areas first and leave the drag coefficients alone and then come back and do the drag coefficients. So uh, the reference area for the cylinder is the diameter times h. We can think of that as the projected area of the cylinder. Uh, it's the, you can, the cylinder is symmetric, so a, any way you view it, it really wouldn't matter. But basically, it's the area that the free stream velocity, you would see if you stared at the cylinder from the free stream's point of view. So that's d times h, um, leaving the drag coefficient alone. The fairings reference area is the plan form area chosen as the plan form area. And so um, that's just the chord times uh, h. So if we look down on the fairing from above, uh, we'll see a rectangle, which will have dimensions of c and h. So c times h there. And then leaving the drag coefficient alone for a second. Now, for this problem, uh, we've said that the chord is going to be 10 times the diameter. Um, so when we substitute that in, um, the reference area ratio will be one-tenth then, right? The H's cancel out um, from the problem, and then you get D over C, which is 1 over 10. Okay, so now uh, the next thing we need to do is to look at the drag coefficients, um, and we've told you uh, what estimates for the drag coefficient would be. So for the cylinder, drag coefficient uh, is about 1, and so let's do that. That's our 1, and for the fairing, it's about uh, 0 0.01. Okay, so the uh, drag coefficient ratio there is, is a factor of 100, 1 over a, a 0 0.01. So multiply that all out, and we see then that the ratio of the drags is 10. So uh, due to this streamlining that is possible through the fairing, even though we're adding all of this extra surface area, we'll in fact see a drag decrease by a factor of 10 compared to if we just had the cylinder exposed to the free stream itself. 